Hey there, Expanse fans. This is Chris. So this is going to be my um, episode two review and top six uh, standout moments. Coming in at number six, we have Lawrence Strickland, the sociopath. I like how they showed you small glimpses of him rehearsing his humanity. Uh, the scene where he was practicing greeting Mao was especially satisfying, in my opinion. This is what I love about adaptations to film or TV. The ability to explore in these small moments concepts that are only hinted at in the uh, source material. Number five is Io. This was a real turning point in the novels for me for a number of reasons. Uh, the story became smaller and more intimate, focused on the relentlessness of one man in his search for his daughter and seeing how the crew of the Rossi uh, responded to him and his mission, so to speak. One major change uh, from the novels, though, is that Katoa and Mei are uh, being transformed into hybrids in the show, because uh, I am assuming the, the shot that we see Mei getting was the first dose of the protomolecule serum thing. In the books, the children were never infected. Uh, Strickland even states this at one point, so that's a pretty huge deviation and will be interesting to see how they play that out if, in fact, Meyer May is uh, infected. Coming into number four, Reverend Anna. This is an interesting move. You know, I love the character of Anna in the books, so it was rad to see her in the show, especially this early. What is odd, though, is how she is positioned in the show. As uh, not on friendly terms with the uh, Secretary General of the UN, but they have a history and they know each other. In the books, this position is held by another religious figure, Hector Cortez, who is more political than spiritual. I'll be interested to see if they bring him in later and how they're going to handle Anna's uh, major story arc that will probably debut in the next season. And they did the pillow hugging. That was one of, my, one of the most endearing things about her in the books, and it was really nice to see them actually do that in the show. Number three is Jules Pierre Mao. Uh, the way Mao's story has played out is really different that in the show than in the books, which might actually work out to create a better through line uh, for his story than what he and his family had in the books. Again, here we are seeing the advantage of film and TV over the books. The exchange where you see Mao come to understand what is going to be done to the children and condoning it is powerful. In the novels, you really aren't 100% clear of his involvement. Given Strickland is literally a monster making monsters, you can imagine that Mao had no idea what was happening, or, you know, very little. They remove all doubt in the show, and that's pretty powerful. Coming in at number two, enter James Holden, finally. One of the things that has been missing from the portrayal of Holden in the show, in my opinion, is his effectiveness in times of crisis. In the novels, for the most part, violence was never his go-to. But when required, he could bring the pain, as it were. Seeing him be an effective commander in this episode was great, and holy crap, that scene where they crippled the UN ship was friggin' amazing. Uh, and by the way, not in the novels, so thank god for creative license. And finally, at number one, Amos. Amos? <laughs> Amos has an incredibly interesting story in the novels, and his character is fairly complex for what you would figure a character like his would be. Uh, they have been doing a nice job with him in the show, and I love the actor portraying him, even though uh, they changed the the visual aesthetic of his character completely. But with the uh, My storyline, they have been able to turn that up. The scene where he and Prax are talking after the battle was a nice way into that story. Also, some of my favorite moments in the later books are between Anna and Amos. And I'm really hoping that we have some of that coming real soon to the show. Okay, that is it for this one. It's a quick video, but uh, this episode didn't really hold a lot of crazy moments for me that I felt warranted uh, a comparison to the novels. So I am working on the first deep dive video. I think I'm going to do a history of how we got from 
earth to the belt and explain a little bit about why there's so much animosity and distrust and open hatred in some instances between the earthers, the belters, and the Martians. So if you guys have any other things you would like me to talk about that aren't covered in the show, any back history or any of that, just let me know in the comments and I will see what I can do. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.